Hello, I'm Jack Howell. This is another video about musical principles, the kinds of things we talk about in lessons all the time. Um, and I think it's actually the most important principle. Uh, we're going to talk about attacks and releases of notes and of phrases. It's the kind of thing that a lot of students uh, leave to the end. They're, we've got to learn all these dang notes. We've got to learn all this hard stuff in the middle. And then we'll, we'll tidy up the, this other stuff later. And I think that's backwards. Um, I think the ability to directly connect your most beautiful tone to the silence is a vital fundamental in wind playing. And the saying that I think encapsulates it best comes from the great flutist and teacher Trevor Y. Uh, two of the favorite, my favorite flutists uh, in my career uh, were students of, of Mr. Y's. Uh, one is Bob Bush, who was principal in New Mexico for a while while I was there, and the other is my wife. So uh, Trevor Y doesn't know it, but he's had a great influence on me. One of the things he said is, the note before the breath must be the most beautiful note. And the note after the breath must be the most beautiful note. So let's, let's hold that thought in mind as, as we talk about attacks and releases. Um, we wouldn't be talking about it if this principle weren't violated with some frequency. And this violation, these violations I'm going to divide into two categories. Uh, the first category being musicians who have the technique to employ it, but don't. And the other is uh, musicians who have not yet acquired the technique necessary to employ it. In the first category, there, there are some really wonderfully accomplished musicians um, who have acquired the habit of, of giving the note before a breath or before any pause a, a little kick, Give, just giving a little, giving, giving a little jump, either as part of the, of the mechanism of and then, and then grabbing a breath or just, just becoming a habit. And it's probably understandable with professionals because they don't have teachers uh, in their ear reminding them about, about bad habits. But when you hear something like this, okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but if, you're, if you happen to be watching this and you're a professional musician, you might think about it because having this habit is a little bit like having bad breath. Um, it, probably, it probably bothers a lot of people, but nobody's going to say anything. Uh, this can also happen with, with intermediate players who uh, are in the habit of counting with their breath. And so they'll they'll stress a, a, a release. Um, things like that. All right, leaving that category, and and really, all you would need to do if you're in that kind of category is be aware of it. Uh, the second category is is players who are suffering from. Um, suboptimal tone production. Um, in, in a previous video, I talked about the difference between creating a clarinet tone using super abundant air, air stream support and focus with minimal embouchure restriction and or versus uh, not having enough air or not having focused air and then making the sound speak by constricting the reed. So Listen to yourself as you play. If you can't start the tone without putting your tongue on the reed, if you can't start the tone 
uh, without kind of a runway so that you so that the you, there's a sibilance and then the tone catches um, if you can't start the tone without immediately taking a breath before and then and then having a reflexive response to that breath then this video is for you um, on the other end of the phrase if you can't um, if you can't end a phrase without kind of jumping off while the phrase is still in motion, or if in order to end a phrase you need to add some kind of like dither, some a little bit of vibrato or something, or if um, the end of the note kind of fuzzes out or, or goes sharp, then this, this video is for you and this drill is for you. The drill I call the center of the stake drill as in beef, and I apologize to vegetarians, but the image is to find the very best part of your tone and then connect that very best part of your tone to the silence exactly when you want and exactly the dynamic and with the intonation that you want. So this drill begins with a long tone. And when we play a long tone, we want it to be very aware of our airstream focus. We want to be very aware of our oral cavity. We want to be very aware of embouchure pressure or embouchure tension. And if you're not aware of those things, I would refer you to the, 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 the double tone drill. Um, so we play our very best sound, long tone, most beautiful note on the clarinet, whatever you consider that to be. And then we do one thing and one thing only. We stop the air, we replace the air. It's very important that you monitor yourself and be aware of, of any tendency to add a little bit of embouchure pressure to start the note or to, um, or to, to try a little bit of tongue on the reed to just kind of kick it and start it. Um, what we want to do is, an engineer would say, we're restricting the de degrees of freedom. We want to have the embouchure remain steady, immobile. We want the airstream focus to remain immobile. We want the oral cavity to re remain immobile. We want absolutely no addition of jaw pressure. So we find the middle of the tone. We withdraw the air. We replace the air, changing nothing else. And you might want to start out doing this with, with like kind of like touch and go landings, right? You don't want to you don't want to call if you if you're suffering from a launch sequence to get a note started. We want to bypass. We want to bypass that. So it's something like this. So you hear that there's, and I'm being very aware not to press, not to do anything, to just stop the air and replace the air. If you can do that without any consonants, without any accent, without any, without any ha, um, sibilance, any, any sound before the, before the note speaks, then you're doing it right. And then you want to do that in different registers, at different uh, dynamic levels, and then you want to work it into phrases uh, and, and make sure that, that every phrase begins cleanly and that each phrase ends cleanly. Now, do we always use this, this kind of attack? Yes. Yes, we do. Always. That doesn't mean that we don't change the character just like in speech, we, we may begin phrases with an accent when the music calls for it. We, we may end the phrase strongly when the music calls for it. But in any case, um, the, we are using this ability to immediately access our very best sound. Um, and a lot of, of teachers uh, have have said similar things. Um, the the 
Russ Dagan said that tone and articulation are two sides of the same coin. Robert Marcellus said that the stopped articulation is a matter of making your very best sound instantly. So this, this, um, this, this tone production efficiency is what we need for, for rapid articulation. It's what we need for wide dynamic range. It's what we need for fluid, rapid legato passages. And I have found in years of teaching, it's kind of spooky, but any phrase that begins with that really clean, pure attack blooms in a way that the same phrase played with a ragged attack never will. It's not linear. Uh, I, I can't explain it, but it's but it's it's true. And um, and also just variety of articulation. Once we free our tongues and our embouchures from the note starting jobs that they shouldn't have been doing in the first place, then we can use them to create a a variety and a, um, a subtlety, a, um, a control of musical consonants that's exactly analogous to the control we have in speech. Um, so keep this drill in mind. If you find that you are, uh, you're having trouble playing in the high register, that, that it's a little bit flat, or there's a tendency to squeak, or um, if you're playing low register uh, accents and there's a tendency to chirp, uh, just think about this, this drill and you know, do a quick double tongue drill, a quick center of the stake drill. Um, once you master this fundamental, then you'll be able to apply the wisdom of Trevor Y and make the note before the breath the most beautiful note and the note after the breath the most beautiful note. Go get them!